Hello, beloved brethren. So now we're going to start in reading. Um, so right before Jesus is, um, we're in John 12, right before he's uh, given to be crucified, after we had read about the um, Jews who, the high priest who uh, prophesied of Jesus needing to be crucified for the people, for the nation of Israel, because the motherland is the kingdom, um, the Jerusalem above and the new Jerusalem are those that obey the Father who are in Christ Jesus, um, the Son of Man, and we're, who is the last Adam. Uh, all of God's creation restored under the Son of Man. Or, yeah. And, God, and Him handing the kingdom over to the Father and death being the last thing to be put under His feet. And so we see before that happens, Mary anoints him to be crucified. Praise the name of the Lord. So we're going to read this part. The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause came I unto this hour, praise the Lord. Father, glorify thy name, praise the Lord. And he talks about, so there, there's people standing by and hearing it, um, they say it thundered whenever he's speaking. So he says, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Now remember the prince of this world is judged. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will I draw all men unto me. The other thing that we want to point out here that the Lord is teaching us through the scriptures is that the prince of this world is not only judged, but during this time he's cast out. What happened was he had a head wound and he came alive again or came back to life. The spirit of iniquity. Um, and you see that that spirit is here now. That antichrist is here now. And he is being judged because he's already judged. And his people are being judged because they are already judged because they're unbelievers. Anyways, any unbeliever is judged. So even the Christians, God may correct and reprove through the scriptures because it's the scripture, the word of God, we, we will see that judges. Okay, praise his holy name. Um, this is said signifying what death he should be should die. The people answered him because so he was saying, I'll be lifted up and I'll draw all men to, to me. So kind of like that he's fishing for men and also he's drawing them up okay it's not that we bring him down he draws us up we go up into jerusalem the heavenly jerusalem the heavenly kingdom and there is war in heaven um, that's why new heaven and new earth need to come because the old one has to die so he had to die the word of god died and when we were talking about israel and judah um jews and israel um, the Lord has shown us through the scriptures that um, Israel, he had divorced the tribes of Israel. And he took, like our sister said, he took the name Israel. So he took his name back. Okay. So because God had given Jacob the name Israel, he said, I give you the name Israel. And he took that name back from Israel because they had sinned and gone after other idols and other gods and worship of self and all sorts of abominable things. And that is why the Lord had to die for his nation, Israel. And you see that here for the nation, he should die for the nation in um, chapter 11. And that in the wilderness was Ephraim and he went to Ephraim. The, and so he didn't walk among the Jews anymore. This is the, I think it's the southern kingdom is Jews. The northern king, kingdom is the, is the tribes of Israel who God divorced. He's remarrying them through the Lord Jesus. Okay, so he, he the, the disciples, 
So you see into a city called Ephraim and there continued with his disciples. His disciples called themselves of Israel. Even um, they even said they were, they were of Judah. So um, it, they were just not separating the Jews and Israel at that time. They were just saying we're, we're um, of Israel. So um, you see that the, the love of God was for his nation, his people. And we know that Gentile means nations, heathen. So you must be in the grafted into back into Israel, into Jesus through Jesus. Cause that's his name. He, it has, he's the Holy one of Israel. He is the son of man. He is the, um, the Lord in heaven, the last Adam. And God reconciled all things unto himself, recon reconciliation of his people through the son. And you see that in the scriptures, you see the reconciliation, the ministry of reconciliation. That's what the ministry is. And all the nations through this process will be blessed. Praise his holy name. So the son of man must be lifted up. Yet a little while is the light with you. Now, we talked about in the previous video about those lights that were serpents, the lights that were decept deceivers. And um, if you looked at that video of the woman who talked about the galaxies, you'll see the lights making the, the name Allah. That is a different light than this light. This is the word of God. That is the Antichrist that she was showing. And they are being deceived and they don't know what they worship. They're worshiping the darkness. And so... Um, Jesus had the light. He's the word of God that was speaking to the apostles. And, he, and so he's telling them, you know, the words I speak, I'm speaking to you light. I am the light that lighteth every man. I give life. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's the God of the living, not the God of the dead. So we worship the God of the living brethren. Um, so walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. They're saying, he's saying, believe on me. He is the word of God, remember? These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. But though he, he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him, that the saying of Isaiah, the prophet, might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? So Jesus is the right arm of the Lord. Therefore, they could not believe because that Isaiah said again, he that he hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. These things said, said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Jesus cried and said, He that believeth on me believeth not on me, but on him that sent me. And he that seeth me seeth him that sent me. I am come a light. So there is your light, the Lord Jesus, the word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us. Emmanuel, God with us. And this is what we're going to understand here. It's so awesome. He's so good. Unto the world. So he's the light that came down. That whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Praise the Lord. Any one of you who believe on Jesus, let this comfort your hearts. And if any man hear my words and believe not, I judge him not. For I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. He that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him the word that I have spoken the same shall judge him in the last day so you see how he's saying 
I'm not judging you, but then I'm judging you because I'm the word. I'm the light. The light is judging. So it's almost like we see the division between him coming to save the world and him coming to judge the world. So the word that same in the last day. So whoever rejects him and receives not his words, that one, the word that he spoke, will judge them in the last day. So it's the spirit, the word that is judging them in the last day. Jesus came to save us through his blood. We overcome the, the world by the blood of the lamb. And his light, the words that he speaks, are light to us. He's a lamp. And in the last day, those who did, those who reject him in the judgment, they will be judged by these words. For I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me. He gave me a commandment, what I should say and what I should speak. And I know that this commandment is life everlasting. Praise the Lord. Whatsoever I ask, therefore, even as the Father said unto me, so I speak. Praise his name. Praise his name. Now we're in chapter 13. I'm only going to try to read the red because I, it was anointed this morning, This the red, in a powerful way. What I do thou knowest not now. Oh, let me start over. What I do thou knowest not now but thou shalt know hereafter. If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. Ye are not all clean. Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me master and lord, and ye say well, for so I am. If I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Praise the Lord. We do that through prayer and through giving the scriptures because the scriptures are clean. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily. See, he spoke the word. He spoke the word to defeat Satan. He spoke the word to help people. He... Um, judged righteous judgment, um, it, which discerning, and he saved, and he healed, and he believed God, and he did the work of God, because he was Emmanuel, God with us, praise his name. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Because to to know the word and not do it is like witchcraft it says in the scriptures to hear the word and not do what it says is like witchcraft i speak not of you all i know whom i have chosen so there's the the ones that he has chosen but that the scripture may be fulfilled he that eateth bread with me hath lifted up his hand heal against me so that was speaking of judas iscariot i think now i tell you before it come that when it is come to pass ye may believe that i am he Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that receiveth whomsoever I send, receiveth me. And he that receiveth me, receiveth him that sent me. So whoever he sends is going to receive, you're receiving him. Praise the Lord. Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And we see in our world today, the betrayers who are walking amongst the sheep, they are the tares amongst the wheat, the wolves in the sheep's clothing who are um, the ones that come after God's people. They are like, just like Judas Iscariot. He it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it, that thou doest do quickly. That thou doest do it quickly. He's talking to Judas. Now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. So God in the Son of Man Israel. So it talks about in the Old Testament and throughout the scriptures that God is glorified in Israel. So we see that the Son of Man, Jesus, God is glorified in him, the chosen to be glorified in him. Praise the Lord. And God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him 
in himself and shall straightway glor glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. Ye shall seek me, and as I said unto the Jews, whither I go, ye cannot come. So now I say unto you, say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, um, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. Praise the Lord. They loved each other very much. And Jesus gave them the scriptures and he said to Peter, he said, if you love me, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He was, feeding, he was feeding them the words and they ended up feeding the words that they received to their people that they, that they had brought under their wing. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. Whither I go, thou canst not follow me now, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, the cock shall not crow till thou hast not denied me thrice. Let, your, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So he will come and receive you. Praise the Lord. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. And with this scripture, we could say that there is no other religion in the world and no other man, no other woman, no name by which man must be saved, but the man Christ Jesus, the son of man, the son of God. He is the way, no other way. Many people say, oh, all ways lead to heaven. That's just not true. God, if you are speaking to God and saying, I want to know you, he's going to say, well, you need to know my son, the mediate, mediator. He's going to tell you, point you to the mediator if you are seriously seeking him with your heart and not in pride or covetousness or anything like that, because he knows the heart. If ye had known me, ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth, ye know him and have seen him. I mean, that, that to me is amazing to know the father through the son. It's awesome that God would show us himself. And he's the perfect image. Jesus is the perfect image of God. And, and Adam was made in the image of God, the likeness and image of God. But with the fall of man, that after eating the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you know, they be, become corrupted and naked before God. Jesus comes to bring that reconciliation back to God through, through his, the God sent the son to reconcile his creation back to himself. And so this is such an amazing thing and um, that he has done. Have I been so long time with you and yet ha hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but of the Father, I believe is what it says. Yep, above, but of the Father that dwelleth in me. There is Israel being glorified by the Father in them. He doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father. This part's very important, brethren. And the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. So he is in the Father. The Father is in him. We are in the Son, and the Son is in us. So where is the Son? That means we're in the bosom of the Father. If we're in the bosom of the Son, we're in the bosom of the Father also. And nothing, we're in his right hand, nothing can pluck us out. So in the right hand, in our flesh, we're outside the temple. In our spirit, we're inside the temple of God, of the living God, because he resurrected from the dead, quickened by the spirit of God. And that same spirit that lived in him and quickened him lives in us and will quicken us at the last day. Praise the holy name. <laughs> so while we're here as ambassadors, sojourners, this is, this is not our home. We are not of the world. Um, we are in the hand of the Father, 
and nothing, nobody can pluck us out of the hand of the Father. This should re, this should encourage you and comfort you, and know that even though in the flesh, um, in this corruptible and mortal, we are in the Father's hand still, and it is in Him we cannot be touched, because He's the Lord in heaven, the last Adam, the right at the right hand of the Father. So we know that even though we're here um, as ambassadors for Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory, is going to make sure we don't fall. He says that in the epistle of Jude, praise his name, for the very works sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. There's the Son, the Son of the Son of God, the Son of Man. The Father is glorified in Him because He's incorruptible, immortal. In His blood was holy, holy, holy. His blood did testify of the Father, and His blood gave a good testimony, and He never sinned. So His blood, it says in Leviticus, life is in the blood. So he is the tabernacle that the Father can be in. He is the tabernacle, the third temple that the Father can be in. It's not a temporary tent dwelling place. His resurrected body is eternal, full of the glory of the Father. And he received that glory that he had with the Father from the foundation. And, re and, and he is being the last Adam, the son of man, son of God, which the devil does not want people to know he's the son of man because the devil, the serpent and the cherub, the cherubim and all of his army, which are serpents, they want to be kings over God's creation. And since it's reconciled unto God through the son, the son of man, the Lord in heaven, all things are under him and they try to be above those that are in the son of man so if you are in if you believe you are in christ christ is in the father and they are in you they are with you the father and the son as we see in the book of revelation that the children tribes of israel have the name of the father and the son on their foreheads they're 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 anointed by god in the last um in the book of Revelation, those tribes are reconciled unto God through the Son of Man, Son of God, Jesus, the Son. And they are all in the Son because they're the believers, the five wise virgins, praise his name. They're lamps that are lit because he's lighting them. <laughs> okay, it's a beautiful thing, brethren. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Praise the Lord. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye shall live also. So did Jesus die after his resurrection? Did he, he cease to be exi exist? No, he is. And we are in the Son of Man. We are in the Son of God. We are in God the Father through by being in the Son. At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. There it is. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my father. And I will love him and he and will manifest myself to him. Praise the name of the Lord. If a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. That's where it says the father and the son's name are on the foreheads of Israel in the book of Revelation. He that loveth me, loveth me not, keepeth not my sayings. So we keep his sayings. We keep what he says. We trust what he says. 
And the word which ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things hath, have I spoken unto you, being yet present with me, with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, praise the Lord, and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, he's done this for me, and it's quite amazing when he does it. I mean, it's, he quickens the word that I've got in my body and uh, comes up rivers of living waters and sometimes fire for the enemy to purge the floor. Um, it's a lamp to our feet also, so, and a light unto our path. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would rejoice, because I said, I go unto the Father. For my Father is greater than I. Hmm. Greater is he that lives in me than he that lives in the world. And if you're a believer, you can say the same thing, praise the Lord. And now I have told you before it comes to pass, that when it is come to pass, ye might believe. Hereafter I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. So if you're in the sun, the prince of this world has nothing in you. If the sun is in you, if the father's in you, the comforter, the Holy Ghost, the prince of this world has nothing in you. Old things have passed away. All things have, come new, have um, become new. The prince of this world cannot control you because you are the Lord's. He has nothing in us who believe. But that the world may know that I love the Father, and as the Father gave me commandment, even so I do. Arise, let us go hence. Now right here he says, I love the Father, and the Father talks about his love of the Son. So these two are, the Father and the Son, are testifying one of the other and the other. They are testifying of the love of the Father and the Son. And this is the most beautiful thing that I have ever seen. When you hear the Father and the Son and their love for one another is absolutely beautiful to me. I'm going to stop this video and go on to the next uh, chapter 15. I got my love to you guys.